One of the biggest misunderstandings in martial arts is that martial arts and self-defense are the same thing. In truth, self-defense is a realm of its own, including the acquisition of specific knowledge such as how to spot and avoid danger, how to de-escalate a dangerous situation, how to run away in the most effective way, and much more. Yet knowing martial arts without a doubt can help you in defending yourself against an attacker. However, not all martial arts were created equal, with some martial arts being great for self-defense and others possibly leaving you even worse off than before you have learned them, choosing the right martial art to defend yourself and others can either save or put your life at great risk. That is why, as a former practitioner of Aikido, a martial art which did not help me in self-defense situations, now on a quest to find out what martial arts really work, I asked IC Mike of Heart to Hurt, a former police officer and now self-defense and martial arts expert, to join me in ranking the most popular martial arts from S to F to find out which martial arts are trustworthy and which aren't. And last important note, while both me and Mike acknowledge that each martial art has outliers who may train and teach in a different, more effective way than the rest of their peers, we will be looking at how well a regular school of a chosen martial art would prepare a regular person for a physical altercation in one to two years. First one, very special, Aikido. We're My starting heart. with Aikido? Yeah, I want to start things so Here's think, what's funny to me yeah. about Aikido. So my good friend Eli Knight, who is a second degree Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, directly under Hoist Gracie. He says that Aikido is the highest form of martial arts. Oh, okay, you caught me off guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when he said it to me, it blew my mind. But basically what he's landed on is it's, it's so good and powerful that humans can't do it. Like yeah. if you possessed the requisite abilities and attributes to make the techniques functional, you would be unstoppable. You'd be that anime character that's like, Psh! like out of the way, you know, and they're, but just humans can't do it. So that makes it simultaneously an S and an F to, in my <laughs> book. <laughs> you know, that's a really interesting idea. There's that theory that the founder of Aikido, that he was just like inhumanly good. And that's the reason he pulled it off. Apparently the top instructors, they were badass high level fighters from other martial arts. There's more chances that they were able to pull it off. In a, on a small way, as a coach and instructor, there are techniques that I wouldn't teach someone that I do all the time. One is like I parry an excessive amount, but I've held pads for multiple hours a day, every day for eight years. Mm -hmm. So if I were to do a demo and had people punch me, I could probably parry like, like Neo, but I wouldn't teach somebody to do that. So it's highly likely that he was just such a monster that he could just easily manipulate dudes. But again, that's that's an exception. I think we're thinking about this regular dude. He's training Aikido <laughs> and he gets attacked after like a year or two years in the street, even like 10 years after. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly want to go for F because, ah. you know, it's such a painful mm -hmm. martial art in my heart. <laughs> There's deep-seated wounds there. I you. know, exactly. I'm working on healing them still, but I can't mm -hmm. deny that they're there. But at the same time, I guess I'm slowly starting to convert myself into a more balanced guy. Yeah. You probably were like, Aikido, 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 and Aikido is an S. And now you're, then you were like, Aikido is an F. You're probably maturing to the point now where you're like, taking all my emotions out of it, I can properly assess it. Exactly. There's a few things which are good. So for example, safe falling, in a way that's kind of maybe not self-defense but self-protection that can save your life the, you know? I, I'd say that's more likely to help you in fact right. I'm embarrassed I didn't think of that I I teach the break falls that we did in Kuxalwan in my modern self-defense program you could throw me all over the place it's gonna be really hard for you to hurt me by throwing me because we did so many break falls. that's a great one added another letter D minus now like one more thing like when I'm shopping and there's a lot of people or where there's a crowd I still feel like I'm pretty good from the Aikido days of just seeing who's where getting out of the way where my fiance says she's terrible at it. I'm like, dude, right. like, how are you bumping into these people? And I'm thinking, well, me, maybe it's just my Aikido background, which is making me m more conscious. Yeah, you might have a better understanding generally where your body is in space relative to others. Let's give it a D then. Let's settle yeah. for a D. Okay, if we look further, it's BJJ. I have my skepticisms. I'm, I'm hoping that no one is stupid enough to sit down on the ground in the middle of a street fight. You yeah. are wrong. They would. I know a guy who not only did it, he yeah. bragged about it while teaching a woman self-defense. I watched him do it in real time. He talked about a time he sat down on the ground outside of a bar. That's a problem. Then taking people to the ground. I was talking to one bouncer who was introducing another guy into you know bouncing and he was like a high level BJJ guy and his, he just really wanted to pull everyone down and my friend was like, dude, 
This is a, like a club. There's a lot of people. Yeah. And he may have friends. He wouldn't understand it on his own. Where would you put it? If there are no strikes included, which I think a lot of gyms don't include strikes. What do you give it first? Then I'll tell you what I think. I'm aiming for B and I'll explain myself in the <laughs> grappling. You think pe people think it's too low, right? I think, yeah. I think a lot of people would go for S because they're so hyped and BJJ is a hyped martial art. But there's definitely good stuff. You know, just the pressure testing and the constant learning to deal with pressure if somebody wants to tackle you. If you get end up on the ground, there's a lot of good things. But I think some things are just not looked at. I would not give it an A. T I was tempted to say B for BJJ just because I'm so <laughs> contrary and just such a shit stirrer. I would say A minus. I'm in the A minus B territory. I'm in there with you. And I know that brains are exploding right now. BJJ is such an effective martial art that it can be trained and taught poorly and inadequately and still be very effective. Right. I think that's going to be a running theme. We're also going to have to just sort of guess at how it's being taught because right. there's crappy Muay Thai schools and great Tai Chi schools that exists. BJJ for self-defense is definitely effective. Like no one would argue that knowing how to fight your way from the bottom or even uh, submit somebody, which in this case would be disable them or incapacitate them from the bottom is an invaluable self-defense tool. The hole that I think is in the training is that they're not as prepared as they think they are. I think eight or nine times out of 10, they'll be fine. The problem with being nine out of 10, nine out of 10 win rate in competition or sport is great. When the consequences for losing a self-defense encounter are so great, I, I think that those things need to be addressed. As prepared as they think they are, I think they would be surprised at how difficult it actually is. I, I myself have used Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in a real life encounter, did a perfect transition from arm bar to triangle to back to arm bar mm. as I was was falling out the front door of a club that I was bouncing at. The guy was an uncoordinated drunk. What I was doing was largely unnecessary and it was, I had hit my head and it was all programming. I was doing a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I was not programmed at that time to just, just stand up. It just wasn't necessarily the best play. BJJ is obviously one of the most powerful and effective martial arts that there is. Yeah. It's just a testament to how effective it is that it's been so successful in so many situ situations, maybe not being trained for the purpose of self-defense. Are, are we gonna be allowed to change our minds sure, later? Sure, yeah, of course. Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> Damn it, <laughs> trying to get me in trouble, man. I to get know, this. this is a dangerous realm. Icy Mike ain't scared of much. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just clear it up so that everyone understands why I'm so scared to speak on this. One, the Gracie's very powerful. But two, I have no direct experience with Grace, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, like the Gracie flavor of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I would say that in some ways, I think that they're ranked maybe even better than BJJ because they give specific lip service to the, the act of self-defense. Right. They are training police officers to handcuff people. They are training people to neutralize strikes. I just don't have enough direct experience to know are they, are they teaching that better. I would guess that it's probably one notch higher than generalized Brazilian right. Jiu-Jitsu because at the very least, they are addressing it. 100%, I'm, I'm in the same position. I haven't trained it. Even the, uh, the lip service of saying, Oh, don't do this, do that. Training. Right. Think about punches. They talk about that. They talk about specific stuff for law enforcement. So they're they're at least addressing it. The reason, though, I wanted to add, I, I'm not aiming for an A, but I'm looking at an A minus, is because you're right that judging from video is is a tricky thing. But at the same time, there's these videos where there's no pressure testing. Whenever it comes to self defense, it's like no pressure Th testing. That was that was going to be the caveat to that. Is from my understanding of it. Right. Is that. Where you go to a regular BJJ school, they don't teach you shit, and then they have you roll right away. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Whereas in the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu program, my understanding is that the free rolling, like not mm. positional or, or or specific situational, sp you know, rolling. Yeah. Just hey, roll. I don't. I'm. It's my understanding that that's not done as early in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu programs. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't have me killed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess. Yeah. A minus from both of us. Yeah, okay? I, I I think if you if you because if you at least just take BJJ and just re, just show the guy what would you do if I was also punching you right. while you were fishing for your choke or your your sweep or whatever that addresses like one big hole in BJJ. A friend of mine who's like a BJJ black belt self defense guy was like in special police force you know like SWAT. He's, he's a bad good. dude. He's a bad dude exactly. When I asked him that question like is BJJ good for self defense he said if you get a combat sports person there's only so a few things you need to tweak and then as soon as you tweak those things they're like 
killers. Right. Right. So right. That's the We've way. talked about that with yeah. BJJ. I've told really good BJJ guys that don't have a self defense background. I'm like, right. dude, just get some training knives and keep doing what you're doing. Right, but have exactly. the training knives in your hand, and you will figure out some really really cool stuff. Okay. Uh, boxing. One thing that I think that we'll have to figure out, especially when we get to the very hyper specialized ones, right. it goes without saying. You need multiple tools. But I'm, I'm guessing we're talking about if we only had the one thing, if you were just training at boxing for a year and then you got attacked, I think it's very likely that you would do okay. Yeah. But then if it goes wrong, it goes catastrophically wrong. Right. It depends. Are you in a fight with a dude that you've squared up with? Mm. Boxing's great. Mm. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about self-defense and that's not it. The problem with self-defense is generally you are in contact with the person before you recognize how much danger you are in. They are generally already close enough to touch you by the time you know you need to be doing your thing. I'd probably put a uh, boxing, oh uh, man, C minus or, yeah, C minus. And I love boxing, and that's one of my primary focuses in my training, but I have had so many good boxers come into the gym and, and want to learn like more stuff. You know what happens, they just get take it, taken down immediately. By someone smaller with very little grappling experience, they get taken down immediately. I probably would have went a tiny bit more up like I was thinking B minus C but then as I was listening to you I was like yeah that, those are great points because one thing I, I do want to say in favor of boxing boxing skills especially if you uh, tweak it a little bit is one of the probably best things for multiple attackers just keeping distance and knocking them out yeah you're right and boxing is the only one that has multiple clear-cut video evidence that it right. happened. Like a guy with definitely boxing skills, not just an athletic guy who could punch, but you could clearly tell by his movement that he had trained in boxing, and it's happened multiple times. It looks the same, so you know that it is the boxing training that did it, like guys knocking out people. But then if he gets tackled... Yes. And there's also that thing, boxers are apparently very conditioned you know, to big gloves and specific strikes, like like good strikes. A friend of mine yeah. was a, a bouncer, he said like his friend who's like a high level boxer, when he was bouncing, he would have trouble because people would throw like weird shots and he wouldn't know what to do because he's just not used to those crazy shots. That's true. That's one of the advantages that grappling has over striking mm. is that you can be a far superior striker and st still lose. It, with, with grappling, mm -hmm. control is controlled. You get a guy off the street, you're going to be able to hold him down very easily with even a very good striker, a guy off the street can still clip him. Boxers are tough dudes. They generally keep their composure when hit, but with no grappling training, you're in trouble. Now, a boxer who grew up wrestling with his brothers is probably a little bit better off than a boxer who didn't. But if, right. the, exer if the thought exercise is like, this is all you've got is this yeah. martial art, there's a couple scenarios where boxing's like the best thing you could do, but there's a lot of scenarios where it won't help you at all. Okay, so let's, Keep C minus. I'm wondering if we will level things up a little bit once we get the crazy martial arts in. Because not right now, <laughs> boxing is next to Aikido. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's getting crazy. <laughs> Stick around, viewer. We may fix some stuff later. <laughs> okay, so I'll just throw in the next one. This is a ninja for, you know, Bujin Khan, have you been ever exposed to it? Is that, a, are you serious? Yeah! I mean, I had some whole scenarios with Bujin Khan, so I had to like put it in there. So, ninjutsu, is that the question? Yeah, let's say ninjutsu. Depends. Are right. we talking guys that go to schools that teach ninjutsu, like the guys you're talking about? Or are we talking about actual ninjas? No, I'm more having in mind Bujin Khan, which is an organization which essentially teaches right. ninjutsu. They call, don't call themselves ninjutsu, but they dress black and they carry swords. They, they only don't call themselves ninjas anymore because it would they're trying not to sound so damn corny probably right. them not calling themselves ninjas right. is the same as aikido saying well it's 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 more about personal development it's not for combat right, right? Exactly. they're saying it trying to concede so they don't have to defend their position anymore but right. if you really ask them because that's a movement within aikido is like well no we, we're not good at fighting but that's not what aikido is for it's a wellness thing i don't believe you i don't think that a, a grown-ass man would go do that shit for several hours a week if he thought that he was just getting personal development out of it. You right. think you can fight. Within ninjutsu and the ninjutsu type places that, and it's where, I, I'm gonna say any place where you wear ninja outfits and they do traditional ninja weapons and they do their unarmed stuff, but they're the ones that'll tell you, oh, it's not about unarmed combat, it's about espionage and right. camouflage and entourages and arbitrages and all these other Aj words, you know? Right. But I don't believe you. I still think that you really think you know how to fight. If we're talking about those organizations where they LARP as ninjas, right. it's an F. It's okay. a total F. If there was something lower than F, it would be an F. Now, if we're talking about the real ninjas that still exist, which 
there is real ninjas out there. Which, by the way, if you're not subscribed to Hard to Hurt, we're doing a video on that soon. Real ninjas is like C or B minus. But the ninjas that you're talking about that you guys are all familiar with, it's F. I wouldn't mind an F. I was thinking about D minus to some degree because a general question for you. What yeah. do you think is better? A guy who's not trained at all and he gets into a fight and uses his instincts or a guy who's conditioned to do these crazy ass moves and he thinks he can do it and suddenly it hits him that he can't. You know, devil's advocacy is one of my favorite things. If I could say anything positive, like you forced me, say something positive about these ninja organizations. Right. I would say that they have spent a lot of time thinking about these things and they definitely probably have uh, their situational awareness dialed up. Right. So if they're in public, they're definitely like pretending that they're Jason Bourne. I don't know what they could do with that information if someone picked them. They would call it escape and evasion. I would call it just like knowing you're going to get your ass kicked. And maybe they, they are at least good enough to know like, oh, I better get out of here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I Maybe. hope he can do that. I guess we can leave it at an, at an F. I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay, so this is a capoeira guy. I never tried capoeira. Only seen it in videos. I've seen some videos where somebody gets knocked out in the ring by a capoeira guy, which makes me hopeful. Mm -hmm. I'm at the same time very doubtful because it's no contact. What you've seen, the stuff that they put out is no contact. It's my understanding, and this is going to be kind of similar to Gracie Jiu Jitsu, kind of out of just we're musing based on our experience, which is limited in this case. Capoeira, like Jiu Jitsu, like many of these words, can mean a lot of things. I know know that they do throw very powerful kicks. They probably kick harder than anybody. I'll say this about capoeira. They're definitely in shape. You can't do capoeira and not be in shape. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere. Now I want to give boxing a C and put capoeira C minus. I'm, I'm thinking about the same thing. Is that okay if we do that just to... Yeah, it... yeah. Okay. If we're both thinking it, that must right. be... Have you seen that video? There is a fight, like CCTV footage. If you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and the guy misses. Right. <laughs> he comes like way later with this beautiful kick that's like a mile. Right. Right. Um, I will say this, there's another video out right now where two capoeiristas, I guess, I don't, I, sorry, they're doing the, the sparring, the, the kind of dance thing that they're doing, and they're, they're hitting each other a little bit, and it gets a little choppy, and one of them kicks the other one, and the other one kicks him back, and then he just throws kind of a Muay Thai round kick or something, uh -huh. and just kicks him just to hurt him, and the guy that got kicked, his first instinct is to grab one of the damn musical instruments and bash the guy with it. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm like, man, if, if Capoeira was all that, you know, wouldn't you just go Capoeira the guy back? You know, I right? Just I know something to hit him with, and Damn. it stopped looking like they were they were not doing the jingo while they were hitting each other. I also actually had that same experience essentially with Aikido. We trained these elaborate movements all the time, but every time I was attacked, I would just punch the guy, and I wasn't even yeah. taught how to punch properly. Hold Hold right. with one hand, punch with the other. Right, yeah. exactly. That's where I started thinking like, wait, this is weird. Why am I not falling back to my training? I'm falling back to something random. Because it was never developed under pressure. Right, exactly. I give Bullshito and McDojo's a bigger pass than most people because everyone's always talking about false confidence. I don't think it's real. I don't think you develop confidence in what you're doing without sparring. Whatever you were going to do before you took a, a fake martial art, <laughs> that's what you do after yeah. you took the fake martial art if you never sparred. I can attest to that. Actually, I did try to convince myself that, that I'm confident while I was doing Aikido, but I never really was. And I met a bunch of Aikido guys when I would talk to them more closely. Mm. They would actually admit that they don't have confidence either. We'd play like we do because I'm a black belt, so I have to have confidence. You're supposed to, yeah. Right, exactly. But Behind then, closed doors, all of you guys were thinking the same thing. Right, like. but then exactly, if some if shit hits the fan, or you, th those situations came up, I had like tremendous doubt and fear because I wouldn't know, I would freak out, I wouldn't know what to do. Now that I have combat sports training, you know, it's, and self-defense training, it's not like it's gonna save me 100% every time, but I'm like, okay, you've I been know there how before. to kick this guy's ass, just in case. Yeah, you've been knocked down before, you've been punched before, you've right, been exactly. strangled before. So now for the next one, I'm not sure if this is a good decision or not. There's catch wrestling and there's wrestling. Let's go with wrestling first. Okay. I'm tempted to say it's S tier. S tier? Yes. Interesting. I'll put it up there for the starters. Tell me more. So wrestlers are some of the physically toughest athletes there are and definitely one of the mentally toughest athletes there are. Both good prerequisites to defend yourself. There's a hole in wrestling though, but I, I've never seen it materialize. Like I've seen guys use wrestling in street fights and on World Star and stuff like that. There's a one big gap in wrestling that I've but I've never seen it develop under pressure. The gaps in BJJ, the problems that Rokas and I discussed in BJJ, I've seen video of those things manifesting. Guys right. too comfortable on bottom. Guys looking for heel hooks and chokes and stuff and getting clobbered by somebody else. The problem with wrestling, it's not the end of the world if they get on your back. 
Just like in BJJ, it's not the end of the world if they're on top of you but in your guard. In the sport context, in wrestling, the downside is if they get your back, it's not a big deal. The thing is with wrestlers, I've never seen that happen. I've never seen someone that I could clearly tell they, they're not going to go belly down to keep from getting pinned in a street fight. Whereas I think a BJJ guy might be more inclined to pull guard or concede a takedown in a street fight. Wrestling is all about pressure, staying on top, and having control of the person. And they're tough, and they're mean, and they're strong. I think that there's no martial art. Let me look. <laughs> I think there's no martial art. Uh, maybe one. We'll give it an A. <laughs> okay, now curiosity is peaked. Okay, I'm because I a. I'd love to have something at S for this tier list. And I was happy that something came up, but at the same time, I was asking in my mind, what about striking? You've like, done MMA, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think that anyone can argue this. I say it, sometimes people argue with this, and I mm -hmm. don't know how you can get away with it. If you've ever trained, you know it's not true. The level of grappling skill required to get a fight to the ground against your opponent's will is far less than the amount of striking skill required to keep it standing against their will. A very, very high level striker and a very, very high level grappler fight. That grappler can take the striker down way more times than the striker could stop him. Now, in the self-defense context, I think that the danger of getting punched, kicked, or whatever, if you're being attacked and you are defending yourself, is tiny in comparison to all the benefits that come with wrestling. Correct me if I'm wrong, but seems like usually the people who are the best wrestling are also the best in MMA. That's a strong yeah. tendency. I think largely it's uh, due to the rules of MMA, sort of like reward it and make it right. more possible. Obviously, no one has a knife in MMA, which is why I kind of wanted to take it out of S tier. But of all the martial arts that you can go pay a tuition to learn or go to a place and learn, wrestling is is one of, if not the best. Most of the more modern self-defense systems, everyone is defaulting to a form of wrestling as the mm. delivery method for mm. their using a weapon in self-defense and defending against weapons in self-defense. The right. base is always wrestling, not Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I never thought about it that way, but once you said it, I'm like, yeah. Sure. Okay, so the next one is going to be interesting. Traditional Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. I took Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, man. Oh, really? It was really good, but we never did any live training. That was my Japanese Jiu-Jitsu experience. When I look back on the techniques, at the time I wasn't as far along in this as I am now. I wouldn't have known like, oh, this is BS or this is good. But looking back, the techniques were all really good. They were all really good techniques. Anytime any like small joint or wrist lock type stuff materialized, it was used to set up better forms of control. Like a lot of the throws looked more like judo, but it was never trained live. I don't know, if your Japanese Jiu-Jitsu school trains live, I'm sure y'all are really good. My experience has been that we didn't. Right, that, that's my concern as well because I didn't train traditional Jiu-Jitsu myself. A lot of my viewers would be like, oh, J Japanese Jiu-Jitsu is the functional version of Aikido. But I look at every single video I looked at, it's always cooperative training never pressure testing, no no competitive element, which doesn't have yeah. to necessarily be there, but usually pressure testing leads to it. And I'm like, what's the point? I guess it's better maybe than Aikido in that regard because you get exposed to these techniques and you get familiar with those mechanics, but unless yeah. you train things under pressure, it's not gonna be useful. Maybe it's a C minus or something like that, that a person might at least have a familiarity with how to manipulate a person. Like actually, that's where I first understood Kazushi was mm. in Japanese Jiu Jitsu. It was okay. it was put into words and explained to me out loud. That's where I first learned it in my brain, but I never learned it in my body until Muay Thai. I never learned how to do that to a person until I was in Muay Thai. It's interesting that there may be a martial art which actually would be good if it would add pressure testing because Aikido, if you would add pressure testing, you'd lose most of the techniques unless... I yeah, I, I don't think any Aikido would materialize. Right, exactly. Like tiny portion, maybe I'd say Yeah, or, or in the case of exceptional people because... Right. And I've been sent, just like you have, I've been sent videos of some stuff happening and it's always extraordinary circumstances or uh, attribute mismatch, right. you know? Exactly. A 300 pound bouncer definitely can wrist lock a drunk <laughs> who has his back turned, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it worked. He could have done anything. He could have done a capoeira kick to him, <laughs> you know? Jiu Jitsu, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, we're okay at C minus. Yeah, for now, for I guess. Now. For now, yeah, exactly. Man, this is getting crazy. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's going to get tough the further we go. So, Jeet Kune Do. I saw you did some cool videos recently with Jeet Kune Do, but that's an exception, I think, rather than the rule. I'm remiss to say, to form a, a blanket opinion based off of Jeet Kune Do, based on my experiences at guys who train in Jeet Kune Do, of which I know a few. The best Jeet Kune Do guys I know are themselves skeptics of the overall efficacy of Jeet Kune Do. Right. Generally, it's been my experience that they're like, kind of okay at a lot of things. It sounds tempting, like, mm -hmm. oh, that's the best mixed martial artist, right? The guys who right. are kind of a little bit good at everything. No, 
that's not the best mixed martial artist. Yeah. And that's how you'd want to be able to defend yourself is be like kind of good at a lot of things. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you need to be really amazing at one specific thing mm. and be good enough at everything else to funnel people to that. Jeet Kune Do, uh, and again, without a competitive aspect to it, without a sport related to it, it doesn't get pared down. Like with Japanese Jiu Jitsu or Aikido, you're like, it's not made for sport. Boxing was, but like, dude, I would rather be a boxer than an Aikido guy in a fight. The sport shaves the bullshit off of the martial art. Taking away the sport doesn't add to it. You can take a sport and add shit to it. The sport shaves bullshit off of martial arts. Most of the Jeet Kune Do guys I know, they spar like kickboxers and they roll like BJJ guys and they maybe know a few tricks that I don't, but haven't spent the time in, they have not chain wrestled, their footwork is suspect. Their composure and their ability to take shots is not as good as guys who fight full contact. But generally, the, the good Jeet Kune Do guys at least have their mind open to understanding like, oh, what if the person has a weapon? What if there's more than one guy? They're more willing to play, play with that. I guess it'd be like the opposite problem of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's like they, they, their minds are so open to the, all these possibilities, but the delivery system's not there. My good friend Ed is a Jeet Kune Do instructor and a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor. And I think he has the best handle on like how a lot of things could happen and he has his mind open to like self-defense. I'd say Jeet Kune Do, I don't know, maybe maybe also in that C minus category, C, C minus. Yeah, I was, I was also thinking because it would feel unjust for me to put it next to boxing because boxing is very good at that yeah. one thing as you made that yeah. great point. <laughs> oh, I don't know though, Rokos. What? A Jeet Kune Do guy might kick a boxer in the balls and that might... <laughs> uh, but we're not comparing like versus each other, right? You're absolutely right. I, you're right. I'm wrong. We're not talking about style versus style. We're talking about... A, what are we talking about? Let's recap. Right. So a guy, a guy with a year or two of training right. defending himself against someone who's trying to mug him, rob him, right. murder him. Yeah. So I think Jeet Kune Do does, does rank under boxing because right. I think of those two guys. It, it's almost like if, if there was like a C minus and C minus minus, I think yeah. Jeet Kune Do would be in between those two. But it, it's also funny for me because it almost seems like C minus is the category where martial arts which have potential, but they're not great at delivery. It seems like right. that's, the, that's that category where they could ascend, but they're right. lacking. They, what some people might get stuck on here is there's probably dudes that do those things that are amazing and could definitely defend themselves. Right. You know, like uh, whether because they're exceptionally talented or exceptionally interested mm -hmm. or exceptionally experienced. Right. But all of that would be exceptions. We're talking about regular ass dude right. trying to learn how to defend himself mm. and sort of taking a, a overall average of the training experiences of places that teach that. So, okay, I think we're settled for C minus. Yeah, for the moment. in there. <laughs> okay, judo. So I, I'll say a few words about judo. Because yeah, I you have, have more experience in judo than me, I believe. Really? Oh, it's still very benign, the, the experience I have. But, but recently I went through this journey and right now I'm publishing videos about it. I was questioning like, okay, so why wasn't I thrown around like a ragdoll? Because my BGJ coach said I will get thrown like a ragdoll. Then I realized mm -hmm. it's probably because I'm just a white belt and they underrated me. They didn't realize I did some other stuff. It's a whole right. long story. Yeah. It was a bit messy, but now I'm kind of clarifying. And I have a lot of respect for judo. There's still that question of it being watered down because of sports element. Now, the thing is, the idea is that different schools choose what they do. I guess similar to That's BGJ. also a consideration we have to make if a, if a place is very focused on self-defense. Right. You know, their judo is going to be flavored for it. If a, if a right. guy's trying to turn out champions or Olympians, right. it's going to look different. Right. But it's just, I also feel like whenever there is a popular sports platform, like competitive platform for the martial art, I think the majority of schools will go towards mainly training that because people will be interested to participate. And again, correct me if, I'm, if you think I'm wrong, but I think that's that's the tendency. Like the minority of schools will say, oh, actually, we'll still teach self-defense. I have a few coaches. One of them is really like always focused on the self-defense element and like the fundamentals. He adds striking. I love it, but his classes, not a lot of people come to them. The ones which is the one which is focused on a lot of flashy moves and competition and etc. And, and discussing how you get points, they're packed. And I think that's how you know, the majority of schools get to the sports element. I totally agree. I think that's why Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu looks the way it looks now. Right. 
everyone fancies themselves some kind of champion at something, and you can't be a champion at self-defense. And guys that, <laughs> you know, yeah. well, uh, being, a, being a champion in a sport is a healthy thing to fantasize about. Yeah. Defending yourself from a murderer is not a healthy thing to fantasize about. And if the sportive style of training is what gets butts in the seats, that's what a school, that's what a school has to do to just stay open. My stuff that I teach, I have one night a week that is the self-defense night. And I have to make sure that whatever we're doing that night is either really, really fun or still relevant to mixed martial arts or Muay Thai so that all of my participants want to be there. Generally, I try to limit the self-defense class to skills that also apply to other things. When you go real hard into self-defense with a lot of people, they're not interested in training that. The people that are interested in self-defense specifically are generally not interested in doing all the other things and that market's not big enough to support most schools. Whatever's in the cultural zeitgeist, which Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu now is, that's what's gonna get people through the door. And I think that's where there's some concern floating around about Judo that there's a lot of focus on the sports element and then they, they took away the leg grabbing, various yeah. grips, so it, it kind of becomes limited. I still think it's it can be very powerful or it is powerful, but I'm still not sure like what's that specific level. So it, it's a tricky one for me to assess. Do you have a idea for a score yourself? I think it ranks high in right. that I think that a judoka definitely can keep someone from knocking them over, like especially an untrained person. It definitely ranks higher than Japanese jiu-jitsu. Right. Right? Because right. in Japanese jiu-jitsu they taught me how to unbalance people and not be unbalanced hmm. theoretically, but I never got lots of practice of it. In judo you're getting lots of practice yeah. of throwing people and trying not to get thrown. I think it depends largely whether they're focused on, you know, tradition or self-defense or sport or some mix of it. But I think that judo, judo as a martial art period is gonna rank very high. And the, the sport has cut through a lot of the BS. You know whether or not the techniques work. If a guy in the street grabs you and starts pushing you behind a car, you will know how to turn them and you'll know whether or not you can. I think it's high. I don't know if it's B, if it's, a minus, but it's somewhere in there. I may be biased here because I, I was thinking about B minus because usually BJJ people take judo people out, or at least that's you know the talk. Okay, but we're not talking about style versus style. True. We're okay, talking okay, about, you got me. <laughs> right? I fell in that same trap a second true, ago because true, it was, true. because we were talking about martial arts that I love and have experience in. Same here. You're you're like oh, but a BJJ guy can definitely because what because the ground because he's better at ground fighting because y'all are rolling on the mats right consensually. Maybe the BJJ guy chokes out the judo guy because he's like, well, I'm gonna get thrown either way. Let me land in a good position to get my submission. But if it's a guy who you don't know how strong, how bad, how mean, how tough he is, or mm. whether or not he's armed, and he grabs you or is in contact with you. The instincts that you develop in judo, I think, are better purposed for self-defense than the instincts of an average BJJ practitioner. It's a good point. I guess A minus. I put it even a with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, actually. Okay, B. Okay. Yeah, I think so because all the scenarios where I would say that judo is better than Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is when you're standing, and I think Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is better than judo when you're lying on the ground. You know, mm -hmm. and I think you're probably equally as likely to be either. You know, we don't know where the fight's gonna go. Now, for all you judo guys who are like, yeah, but we fight on the ground too. Not as good. Yeah. Not as good. <laughs> right, right. No one's crediting their judo career for winning uh, submission tournaments and grappling tournaments. And if you say, but we're talking about self-defense, not tournaments. I'm like, dude, it's two dudes fighting on the ground. One chokes the other one out <laughs> and he yeah. tells you he used Brazilian jiu-jitsu to do it. And everyone tells you they use Brazilian jiu-jitsu to do it. That means Brazilian jiu-jitsu is better at it. Yeah, and I guess... For me also, the B kind of is justified because of that focus on sports. Again, not all yeah. schools do that, but it seems the majority do, and I think that's a lackluster, so I'd be, I think B is appropriate. I'm with it. Kali, Eskrima, and Arnis. There is a lot of organizations and places where they spar hard competitively, sometimes full contact. Most famously, the Dog Brothers, which they host, full, they host these big meetups where right. you, you bring whatever weapons you want, whatever rule styles you want, and they, they go full contact, mm. you know? And they just beat the brakes off. It's like Fight Club, but with sticks. Right. The problem is that when they spar and compete, they don't do anything that they were doing in class. <laughs> <laughs> in class, they were doing all the flow drills, and like many of the martial arts, and people will argue, and they say, not at my Filipino martial arts school. My school is different. Okay. Uh, 
in class, they're all doing flow drills, and then in sparring, they're all wailing on each other. The reason I'm gonna rank this pretty low, in my opinion, for self-defense, is because the flow drills won't help you in self-defense, mm. and going to war, two dudes holding sticks, going to war with each other, won't help you in self-defense. Doing one of them will just get you the same amount of dead as not knowing how to do it. <laughs> and the other one is just how to commit murder. Because there's strategic and tactical elements of stick fighting or knife fighting or any sort of mixed media full contact fighting. Even if you've done it and you're good at it, that's not what self-defense looks like. So those skills won't transfer directly over. If, a, if you're doing a stick fight, both of you want to stick fight, you're gonna stick fight. But if one of you wants to wrestle, and the other one wants to stick fight, you're gonna wrestle. Some people would argue, oh, but you won't always have your stick and a knife might not always be appropriate. One of the theories of Filipino martial arts is that you're able, it's a delivery system where you can use anything as a weapon. Like if I've swung, if I've done lots of stick fighting practice and I pick up a umbrella or a chair, I'm probably gonna be better at using it on somebody, somebody who hasn't. I agree with that. The circumstances in which that would be helpful in self-defense almost never occur. It's all very theoretical. We have lots of videos of fights and attacks and assaults. We, we have plenty of evidence of how it really happens. Uh, as a police officer, I wrote thousands of assault reports. There was only like seven different stories. You know, it was never very complicated. Mm. And being a, a collie master never would have helped. Mm. And the most popular disarm from Kali, what I think is probably one of the most effective ones, the snake disarm. There's lots of videos of people doing it because it's extremely intuitive and it's not people who did Filipino martial arts. It's where they scoop the weapon out of someone's hand and kind of break it free like that. Mm. Anyone who's ever been attacked by their little brother with a wiffle ball bat has figured out how to do that instantly. And there's mm. tons of videos of guys doing what's essentially a bread and butter Kali technique having never trained in Kali. I rank it pretty low. Uh, I, I love the martial art. I think it's cool and beautiful and interesting as an art. But if you want to learn how to defend yourself, I don't think a Filipino martial arts school is the place to do it. I'm, I'm completely fine with you just giving a score because I, <laughs> I don't have it. Rokas is like, I'm not getting into this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just I, I can Filipino martial arts uh, enthusiasts are among the worst video commenters and internet commenters. Really? I they are the... It, they're worse. They're worse than the Kung Fu guys. They go berserk and the things they say are so maddening. They're big into lineage and name dropping. They'll tell you, yeah, right, tell that to... And they'll name drop a dude, right. you know? Like they're challenging you to fight someone else, which is always a bitch move. The dude that they name has never fought anybody and never killed anyone with a knife. <laughs> and has no yeah. videos of him sparring. <laughs> That's the dudes that they will like say like what he says is what I believe. I'm not even saying that he they're not scary badass dudes. Mm. I just question how people can so fervently believe it. It's one thing for a guy to say some stuff and you're like that kind of makes sense. He looks like he's in good shape. He's making sense what he's saying. I tried this yeah. technique. It's pretty good. But to like devote yourself fully to the idea that this guy is the bomb and it's like <laughs> ah, he might be full of shit. Oh, I just don't know how you could be so sure that he's not. That you're willing to spend 10 years of your life and being certain you can defend yourself using what he's teaching. Right. Despite no one ever actually doing it. It's just weird to me. I, th I think it's an interesting phenomenon in martial arts and combat sports is that the more experienced the person is, I find that usually the more careful they are about making claims and vice yeah. versa. So what's that final score? Oh, shit. <laughs> Comment section is about to blow up. I want to say D, but I don't think it's fair to put it next to Aikido. Oh, yeah. Because I, I do think there's something to the, the, the ability to deliver power with a strike. They do get that from. Mm. What if we put it D and then moved Aikido down to D minus? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think since we started off yeah. with Aikido, it got yeah. a lot of leverage that way. Because it's relative, because we're making comparisons, so. Right, exactly. Okay, karate. Man, bro, I don't even know if we should do that. <laughs> Just karate, period? Karate but, means a lot of things. There's a couple of more icons of karate afterwards, but generally, like, so let's say, I know this is tricky, but let's say somebody is choosing like a local gym blind, blindly. Right, if like, we're just taking an aggregate of what we know about karate schools. Right, somebody just types in karate and goes to the first local gym, the chances are that it's gonna be which rank? I feel like just a general, God, oh my God. <laughs> this is scary. This is scarier than the Gracie thing. I know excellent karate practitioners 
who understand fighting, who understand sport, who understand self-defense and understand where they all diverge and where they all overlap. But if we're just aggregating my experiences with karate, it's somewhere in there with Jeet Kune Do. I generally feel like they probably punch and kick better than Japanese Jiu Jitsu and they probably throw people better than Jeet Kune Do. If you just if you don't know anything else about the place and you said it's a karate place, I wouldn't be very optimistic. Right. Now, if you said it's a Machida karate place, I'm like, well, it's A or B. Comment below like what the the real karate place is that does work on self defense. Mm. I think they just probably can punch and kick okay. They probably kind of understand some throws. They're probably abysmal at ground fighting, but think that they're not. <laughs> that's been my that's been my experience with karate. Period. Is that they try to make it everything, uh, and it's just not. It's just not. You're not. You're not good at ground fighting. You're not. That's okay. <laughs> but what do you think? Yeah, I, I'm there with you. Uh, I think C minus is the good place. That that place of where it could have potential if it does the right things. Yeah. And but usually it doesn't. Like many schools don't. I think you know there's yeah. many schools focus on kata, which is a big question of what's the utility of that. Then there's the sport, the point sparring. I think it just doesn't. My impression of karate is that if it's trained like in that regular, usual way, it just doesn't get used to that pressure and intensity. Yeah. And they get hit and, and punched in the face. You know, they're probably going to be like, what the fuck is happening? I think that's the problem. Well, I, I covered that in a video once. Uh, yeah. You know, a, a Kyokushin guy versus a Muay Thai guy. And the Kyokushin guy was just a monster. He was just scary and, and just made out of wood. Punched and kicked hard. Took full power punches and kicks without flinching. And then got kind of bumped in the face and went like this. Oh, no. <laughs> right? Because he hadn't trained for that. Right. Not because he wasn't a tough guy. Not because he didn't know how to fight. It's because he'd never been punched in the face before. Right. Or people argued, well, if it were a real fight, he would. That's conditioned. That's a conditioned response. He's trying to get the judge to go fuss at the other guy. You know, trying to make it clear. It's like when you stop for a groin shot that didn't really hurt that bad. But, you know, you just know that... You got hit in the cup, so you just stop. And now, of course, like I said, I'm sure there's karate schools that are A. And I'm sure you think your karate school is S. <laughs> it's not. It's not. But I'm sure there's, if you train with the Machitas, I bet you're a bad dude. Right. But there's also karate schools that are F. Yeah, you know, right. there's also places that the guy just decided to give himself a black belt. Mm -hmm. Or he ordered it online. And he just rented some place in a strip mall. Right. You know what I mean? Anyone can do that. But if we're aggregating just our experiences and our knowledge of most karate places, which probably includes yours, yeah, I think somewhere in there. And I think with karate, it's fairly easy from what I gather to get that fake black belt, where in combat sports, like to be a fake black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, really tough. It's, Im it's impossible. You'll be, find out, you'll be found out right away. Right, exactly. But with karate, you can get away with that, with, I think, which I mm -hmm. think kind of shows that there are still flaws in the general delivery system. Hey, and here's how, you get away, here's how you get away with being... Uh, a Bushido black belt. You just say that your art wasn't made for competition. No one can challenge it. It's too dangerous, <laughs> and it's too dangerous to pressure test and. Right. Yeah. Test. We don't. Well, we don't train for competition. So when you go into the school and you're trying to get information on it, you're like, "Do you guys compete?" No. Our martial arts does is not for competition. It's too deadly. Right. <laughs> it's too dangerous. Okay. That might be true, but I don't know. There's competitions for for SWAT teams, man. SWAT teams compete with each other. <laughs> They're probably too deadly to spar. <laughs> You mentioned Kyokushin Karate. Does that differ if you know that it's a guy who's going to go to Kyokushin school? Does it go higher or lower for you or same? If I know that it's specifically Kyokushin, yeah. if they don't train throws and punches to the face, mm. it, it would rank lower than karate generally to me because my understanding of karate is that it's striking and limited throws. If right. they do train throws and punches to the face, I would rank it higher. Mm -hmm. I would put it somewhere near Bach, like C, or mm -hmm. maybe even B minus. Mm -hmm. If a Kyokushin karate practitioner trains, if the, every, if very regularly they put boxing gloves on and punch each other in the face, he's going to be next to boxing because right. he's definitely a tough dude. Right. If they train throws at all, he's going to be even higher. But just a guess, I'd put it. I would put it maybe even with karate if we don't know anything else about the specific school. I think if you just do the Kyokushin Karate where they just like stand like like eight inches from each other and right. they go. <laughs> I know, right? Right? If they just do that. Because they're gaming. You know what I'm talking about? Because they're exactly. gaming the system. It's yeah. as ridiculous as butt scooting in BJJ. It's just right. like if they just block like this and that's the only type of training that they do because they're 
just doing sport Kyokushin. I think it has a lot of holes in it. But if they put on boxing gloves and they grapple every once in a while, they're probably pretty bad. If you would have left it at D, I would have been fine with that because of the tendency from the Kyokushin that I bumped in and I've seen. That's what I've seen, yeah. Right, it's usually no punches to the head. Again, that, that sport element, which usually drives most of the schools towards a certain direction, there's no protect, protecting the face and they're tough dudes. Of course, but as you said, yeah. like you get punched in the face and you lose your plan. If you're not getting punched in the face, it's like a D. Right. If you're getting punched in the face, it's somewhere in the C range. Everyone tells me that their Kyokushin school trains punches in the face, but... Okay, so uh, I guess I we can honor those. I've never seen it. <laughs> me neither, but I guess we honor what everybody says this time. And sure. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of karate, Kempo karate. Is, is, it, is it Kempo with an N or an M? It's a good question. It's an N. Because those are two different things. My understanding, which is limited. Okay. Seth tried to explain to me the difference between Kenpo and Kempo, okay. uh, but it wasn't very interesting, so I stopped paying attention. <laughs> There's a thing called American Kenpo, which is supposed to be like more street. It just seems more like edgy Jeet Kune Do. I think it's probably bullshit. The type of karate that Sensei Seth does, Kenpo, uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, that, that's just like a sport karate style. I would argue that they would probably even tell you that generally their karate style by itself is not the best for self-defense. Any, any guy who's competed at a high level understands the limitations of even his own art. Just as you were saying before, the guys who are experts, they're always careful to, to be like, what we teach is the bomb, you know, and it's all you need. Sportive karate. If we're talking about punches and kicks and footwork, it's probably somewhere in there with just regular karate. If you're really, really, really good, like if you have a high level comp competition team, maybe it's even with boxing, cause you know, they, they have fast hands and fast feet. But if we're talking about the, uh, the, the American stuff that you can, they used to be, you could order a black belt and Kempo online. But all, of course all the Kempo guys would say, well, that's not the real Kempo. It's just like any other martial art. They'd be like, that's not real. Right. Rokas, you know what you did wasn't real Aikido. That's why you think Aikido sucks. I know, I was so unlucky. Yeah. All the schools I trained in were not the real Aikido. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every single one of them was every the single wrong. One. I, I was going back and forth in the comments the other day with a guy telling me he doesn't think that I've ever seen or known a real Aikido master and he has real Aikido and he wants to come do real Aikido. And I just, I just always want to ask them, I'm like, what do you think the chances are? And this could apply to Kenpo, or it could apply right. to Jeet Kune Do, it could apply to Kung Fu, or any of these things that just... I'm like, what are the chances that out of the hundred years of television, and the hundred years of Valley Tudo that we've had, and the 20 years right. of mainstream coverage of mixed martial arts, and the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of fights captured on camera, and visible on YouTube and World Star, what are the chances that you and only you <laughs> have the secret to demonstrating and explaining the potential of your martial art. What are the chances of that? I think, and I could be wrong, I think that whole American Kempo scene, it's like the 80s, 90s karate dudes that like were tough. They probably are tough dudes and they could probably fight a person. We actually have to look at this maybe a little more carefully, I think, because I think a karate dude in a fight with a person right. is just as good as a boxer in a fight with a person. But if we're talking about you've been grabbed or you've already been hit, and everyone says, I'd never let anyone get that close <laughs> if they're self-defense minded, it's like, yes you do, bro. You stand in line at the grocery store just like everybody else. You could like go down a deep, deep rabbit hole with that. Because all these guys in this sea, tier, the, the C and the C minus, all those guys, probably could fight a dude pretty good. Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to fight? Fight. They'd probably all beat the shit out of a guy with no training. But if there's an, an ambush or a weapon yeah. or something like that, I think that they all have problems. I think leaving it somewhere in the middle there is probably fine. We can move on to kickboxing. But that word can just mean so much, man. Really? How come? Because yeah. I thought like so far I have this impression that kickboxing is kickboxing glory you know etc glory glory k1 style kickboxing sure just to me that word means it's not a martial art though it's a f idea taekwondo is kickboxing muay thai is kickboxing if you're punching and kicking that's to me that's kickboxing i guess to, to make it more easy if i would type in kickboxing to google find a local gym i presume they would be uh glory k1 yeah type of i would probably i'd probably say it's similar to boxing I'd probably okay. say C. I think I'm with you, but 
isn't that an advantage that you can also kick and you know how to take kicks? Yeah, it's well, but time spent kicking is time not spent punching. You know what? Kickboxing might even be, hmm, I'm a little biased. I, I, I love kickboxing and our style of kickboxing is influenced by so many things. Mm. But I see you have, I see you have Muay Thai, which is I'm, I'm, I'm going to separate the clinch right. from kickboxing, right? Because we're going to include that in Muay Thai. Right. So without the clinch, kickboxing is very similar to boxing. Right. Maybe there's the it, I don't think that the advantage is that over boxing is that you can kick. That's a situational thing. And mm. for every situation where it'd be great to kick, I think there's probably an equal number of situations where it'd be great to have super fast hands that you can knock somebody out with and you're very accurate, which you spent time getting in boxing. Uh, I would say the only advantage kickboxing has over boxing would be maybe balance. The practitioners of it would probably have better balance in a wider variety of circumstances. Just a guess. But what we do have is we have the element of these guys fight. If we're talking about guys that fight, they're tougher and more composed under stress, which mm. that makes me rank it a little higher than the ones in the, the below it that maybe right. don't have that sort of full contact Punches to the head, punches to the body, kicks to the legs, kicks to the body. I think that's the case where I would like a B minus minus, like you know that between B minus and C. Yeah. But so you think it's a little bit better than boxing? To try to defend it, I'm thinking also about the push kick, which is, I think is a really powerful weapon. But I guess yes. the person has to be taught properly yeah. because it can be good for weapon defense, just pushing a guy, like keeping distance. I would concur that I would actually trade some punching speed and accuracy for a good front kick mm. it's my favorite kick it's the the only kick i've ever done a full length course on i teach seminars on it mm. and it is the best kick for self-defense because it allows you to stay square you could use a kick to def that kick to defend yourself against someone who has some sort of weapon right. and it's the only kick that really works well if you yourself have a weapon because like you can just use it and still have your weapon you could follow up with your weapon or keep your weapon away from a person using that kick that front kick you're absolutely right. I would say you could put B minus. I would okay. be. I would agree with that. Okay, because now I think it's going to be tricky though because I'm very happy to have it at B minus. But then we have Muay Thai and we have the clinch. Are we going to Muay Thai next? Yeah, let's make Muay Thai. It's close enough to kickboxing. I think it's higher than kickboxing. I think it's a B. Okay, so B because otherwise I would have been B minus. But now right, kickboxing they, yeah, is... we need you need something in between. It's Muay Thai then kickboxing then boxing based on the the things that we've described. Right. But now we've run into, and I know, I know what you're thinking, you're like, now we're putting Muay Thai next to BJJ, what the hell? Right, BJJ and Judo. <laughs> Which I guess that's okay with me, especially because clinch work is powerful. Mm -hmm. Elbows, knees, mm -hmm. close distance. I guess I'm mm -hmm. okay with B and Muay Thai. I know why someone might look at that and go, that, that can't be right. Because they would say Muay Thai is not what's winning UFC fights against other UFC fighters. But remember what we're talking about. But that's versus versus. Yeah, we're talking about a, a guy with a, a year or two of training versus right. someone who's a criminal. There are scenarios where Muay Thai won't help that person, just as there are scenarios where BJJ won't help that person. Mm. I think it's a similar number. I think it depends where you're standing. If, if we are in a packed club and I'm trying to stay on my feet, I think Muay Thai would do that just fine. They'd sweep each other and dump each other. Right. You know, And you're not getting blast doubled by a college wrestler. Someone might argue, you could be. Bro, I don't care. Like, if you're getting blast doubled by a college wrestler and you're behind the curve on the initiative and both of y'all been drinking, you're probably in trouble no matter what you right, take on this exactly. list. I think there are plenty of scenarios where a Muay Thai practitioner could use his martial art to defend himself. I think you, can, you could very easily argue that they would have ability to control the limbs, not, maybe not on par with judo, but they... Mm. but. Similar to, we, you know, our Grec we have a Greco-Roman wrestling class on Monday, and then I teach a Muay Thai class on Tuesday, mm. and I generally just use whatever clinch position that we were using in Greco. Mm. I just have everyone stand up straight and throw knees, but the clinch positioning, as far as how you're controlling the limbs and the head, the mechanics are very similar. And as you said, knees and elbows are powerful self-defense tools, and no, your grappling won't, won't be as good but remember, we're hopefully not getting mugged by a purple belt. B, Muay Thai, I'm completely cool with that. But then what about lethweight? Does that change anything for you? What do you think? It's hard. Head butting and just they, mm -hmm. they seem to be more lethal, even more conditioned. Like Muay Thai, people, guys are badass, especially if they're, mm -hmm. you know, that yep. kind of Muay Thai. And that, that's yeah. actually, uh, I'm glad you said that because that reminds me. Another 
great aspect of Muay Thai is that they are extremely athletic and strong and in good shape. That to me, that's the best self defense. Right. If 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 anything, that would give points to boxing because boxing athletes, if they can if if they can avoid the the brain damage, they're always like in tremendous shape. For you, does left weight the element of even more conditioning and even more ability to take damage. I think it's probably, I think my opinion is, it, it's probably not different enough from Muay Thai to warrant being anywhere different. Here, I'll say the controversial thing. The Muay Thai skill level of Lethway fighters, if you didn't have headbutts and it was just a Muay Thai fight and you were to compare like local champs and regional champs and world champs, you know, the, the overall uh, skill, technical skill level mm -hmm. is generally lower in Lethway. Because think about it, it's only certain types of dudes willing right. to do that. Yeah, you know, it's a, so it's a smaller pool. Mm. So with Muay Thai, you have a huge pool to pull from. Right. So the overall skill level—that's not a knock on the martial art. Right. Yeah. That's just—it's not saying that Lithuanian fighters can't be as skilled as Muay Thai fighters. I'm saying, since competition shaves bullshit, right? More competition shaves more bullshit. Right. Right. So the the skill level required to excel in Lithuanian, like it's hard to get good. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like being a gunfighter in the old west like you right. didn't have a long career like how did you get good at that if if you could get headbutted at any minute i'd be like nah man i'm not doing that a addition of the headbutts is an amazing weapon the headbutt is an amazing self-defense tool but at what expense what are you giving up time right. spent doing that is time not spent doing something else i don't know that being like tougher i think there's a point of diminishing returns like right. obviously boxers tough kickboxers tough uh judo muay thai jiu-jitsu guys tough one of my one of my selling points of wrestling is that they're so tough the toughness that you're getting by being at the top of the left way right. world <laughs> it might reach a point of diminishing returns like i think that's just insanity at that point right. you got to be pretty crazy mm -hmm. you got to be crazy to, to do any of this right Hmm. But you have to be a special kind of crazy to do left way. <laughs> and and yeah. hey, hey, yeah. and before anyone gets upset, I challenge you to find me a left way practitioner that would disagree with what I just said. Because <laughs> they'll all tell you, no, we're fucking crazy, bro. Right. Dave Leduc will tell you, he's like, I'm a fucking nutcase. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and I think that what brings me to think about as well, like the connection between self-defense and self-protection. For me, self-protection does come into self-defense to some degree. Being healthy and, you know, eating good food, yeah. being smart. That's one of the best yeah, so, ways to protect yourself, and, and left wing yeah. is not necessarily that. <laughs> yeah, you could maybe argue that, oh, but they have the mentality of, like, just because I'm down doesn't mean I'm out. You know, yeah. maybe th that's in there. Mm. Uh, and then, but then you, you present a good counterpoint, like, well, maybe your brain cells aren't there. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're killing you know. yourself. Without yeah. even somebody attacking you. <laughs> on the if you compete in Lethway, there's a greater chance you'll take multiple concussions than any other sport. You can right. get you can get double concussed in boxing or kick by any striking sport. Yeah. But like in Lethway, it's almost almost guaranteed. I, I think B is well placed. I think it's similar point. enough to Muay Thai. Right. So I I'll think if you do Lethway, if you really do Lethway, I'm not too worried about you being able to defend yourself. I think you'll be alright. <laughs> the next one is the Krav Maga. <laughs> I heard you sigh. Well, you've got Krav Maga worldwide, which is a specific organization. Oh, is it? Organization. Oh, fuck. That's my bad. Uh, it, well, right. no, it, it doesn't really matter because okay. it's all kind of the same. Krav Maga, oh. all the Krav Maga guys that I train with mm -hmm. were at one point par part of Krav Maga worldwide and have all split from it. Right. Um, they don't have a ton of like terrible things to say about it, but generally it falls into the category of Jeet Kune Do. They're just like kind of okay at a lot of things and they don't have a great competitive element. So they never get, they grapple and they strike and they use weapons, but they don't have a, a mechanism to know how good they are at any of that. And that's common. It's hard to know how right. good you are if you don't compete. And if we're talking about self-defense, not all of its elements that you can compete in. Generally all the Krav Maga guys I know that still teach Krav Maga, basically take that Krav Maga base and they just added a shit ton of wrestling to it. Mm. Um, usually, and it looks more like, like a Greco-Roman style of wrestling. Controlling limbs, controlling posture, that sort of thing. All the Krav Maga people I've trained with are serviceable in a wide array of skills. Similar to Jeet Kune Do. I'm completely with you. I think it nicely falls into that C- minus category of where it could be more than it is, but it isn't usually. Like I know for a fact that there are exceptions where they're pressure testing, etc. But usually it's funny that the cases I bumped into which are like those they actually distance themselves from the name Krav Maga because Krav Maga just has such a strong image and and 
I guess, yeah. the training methodology where they don't pressure test and, and they make it nice for soccer moms, etc. I, I really admire the fact that they're supposed to tell you like running away is you know the best thing and then keeping distance awareness but even then i'm not sure if that's not lip service and if it's done all the time i don't know the the krav maga schools that i've been to they talk about it um but no one want, no one's gonna pay for that shit <laughs> yeah. i'm i'm actually working on a video now it's gonna be the reason there are no real self-defense schools um, and it basically, spoiler alert, since we're pretty deep into this video on your channel, yeah. <laughs> I can spoil my video. Sure. It's because no one would pay for that. No right. one would pay for you to teach them how to s situational awareness everything. You know what I mean? Right. And if they're not going to pay for it, nobody who's good at it is going to spend their time teaching it. Mm -hmm. There'll be guys who would offer to teach you that shit for free. They're probably not good at anything. It's really hard to have a legit self-defense school running continuously like if somebody comes in and you tell them the a to z of the things which are necessary to do or like how to avoid situations it's like you can do that for a few times and that's usually like more or less enough you get to know that yeah. essential knowledge there's always you can go like dive deep but regular people most of the times don't need it and then mm -hmm. you can't really run a school with returning clientele yeah yeah the, so the, the krav maga guys i know also in their schools have brazilian jiu-jitsu programs mm -hmm. striking programs and you might could also learn a flying triangle or a cartwheel kick in there just yeah. for fun because yeah. martial arts still should be fun right but to learn how to defend yourself with krav maga i think you're a good bit better off than someone with no training yeah by a good bit some people are going to see c c minus and think like man that's screwed up yeah that's a many steps up from nothing Right. I think also skeptics, some skeptics would even probably give a lesser score of Krav Maga. Yeah. Uh, and I would have a few years ago. Right. You know, we talked about as we mature in this, we, we, right. we're more forgiving. So I'm noticing our, our, our tier list is real big in the middle. Right, exactly. <laughs> we're like, ha, huh, we're okay with it being here. But it's a yeah, good point. Yeah, like, C minus. Everything's sort of right, C minus. Yeah. <laughs> because a few years ago, me too, I'd be like, ah. It's all shit. It's all F. It's either S yeah. or F. <laughs> yeah, S or F. Everything's S or F when you're when you're new in this stuff. Right. Now the next one is also very interesting. I know mixed martial arts MMA is not a martial art, but you can easily type in MMA and you're gonna get into a school which you, teaches MMA. So yeah. Yeah, you can go to a place that teaches it. Right. Exactly. That makes it suitable for this exercise. Right. So what's your score? What's yours? You go first. <laughs> you can put me on the spot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I. I you're hey. Hey, you're the only one of us who has fought in MMA. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? Oh, okay. actually, spoiler alert, April 16, my second fight. So Really? Yeah, yeah. Where? Sweden with uh, Oliver Enkamp. Holy cow, that's amazing. I know. I'm, I just learned about it yesterday, so it's fresh in my mind and I'm, you know, stressed now. But anyway, <laughs> so I'll, I'll let everyone know about that a bit more later. Coming back to MMA, first instinct would be go for A because it's so versatile uh, and just put it next to wrestling. But at the same time, you brought up that really good point. If you're good at many different things, you're not really good at any of them. I think MMA schools, especially if you go to an MMA school, that's what you're usually going to get. You're going to learn a little bit of everything. And especially if we're thinking about a couple of years of training, you're probably not going to get very good at any of those unless you're focused on one of them. But I think that's Correct. an issue with MMA schools is is you, you you learn so many things at the same time. And that was actually my case with Wimp to Warrior for six months. We were training like five, six days per week, but every day we'd get something new and I was over overloaded. I was like, okay, like what is this? Like how does it come together? And only now I'm starting right. to see it. So I think it probably can't really be at A. I'd be okay with putting it at A minus because of the versatility, because of how much you get. But I wouldn't be surprised if you would challenge me on that. No, I, I concur. Okay. I don't think it's even with wrestling. Uh, one, for the reason that you suggested. Mm. I think a wrestler is going to wrestle the shit out of you if, mm. if he wants to wrestle you. Like if you grab a wrestler or try to stab a wrestler or try to punch a wrestler, he's going to wrestle the shit out of you and he's going to be really good at it. Can he get punched if you're standing there boxing with him? Yeah, he could get punched and kicked a lot. Guess what? Self-defense encounters rarely look like that. Yeah. You know, they look like messy uh, wrestle fests, and a wrestler does not want to get pinned. He wants to be on top. Mm. Mixed martial artists. Now, mixed martial artists could be, just like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Judo or any of these other ones that are in this A and B area, 
could be amazing for self-defense with a few modifications that we talked about earlier. Mm. It wouldn't take much because they're already strong, fast, know how to punch, know how to kick, know how to not get punched and not get kicked, know how to take someone down, know how to not get taken down. The advantage that mixed martial arts has over wrestling, if you just did six months of only wrestling or six months of only MMA or one year or whatever, uh -huh. the advantage mixed martial arts has is the cage, the wall, if you do wall work, that is very useful in self-defense. Mm, okay. That's definitely a big part of self-defense. Why I don't think it, it makes it even with wrestling or above wrestling is because I think a wrestler's probably good enough at it. I think he'll do okay. The problem with mixed martial arts is that it has elements of wrestling and elements of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So depending on the practitioner, they're gonna have tendencies and training scars. They yeah. might concede takedowns. I know MMA fighters who are not good at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That's not their, well, I can't say not good. They're not, that's not their focus. And even they, knowing that the other guy is better on top than they are on bottom, will, when tired, when scared, when under pressure, right. concede takedowns and pull guard. Mm. You see it all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a training tendency that's present in BJJ that's not present in wrestling. Mm. You know, the, the comparison I made earlier in wrestling, they have the belly down instinct. I've never seen that happen. Mm -hmm. I don't see any, I don't see a wrestler going belly down if someone's trying to punch and kick him or stab yeah. him. Right. Yeah, I do good. see a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner pulling guard. Right. And I've seen MMA fighters under pressure give up like that, jump, jump for guillotines that they don't really have, pull guard because they don't want to, you know, they feel like they're going to get taken down anyway. And also the, the pace because of the stand up portion, I think that might lend itself well to a feeling out process. You know, they, they, they might mm -hmm. take time to get going and that exists in wrestling. There's a little bit of footwork and stuff in the beginning, you know, but once it's go time, mm. it's like you go, like wrestlers just go, 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 go. And high level mixed martial artists do that with wrestling backgrounds, mm. they chain wrestle. Mm. All right, but just a guy going into a mixed martial arts gym for a year or two, he's gonna be not very good at anything, at least in America, in most MMA schools. His grappling will be okay, and his striking will be rather poor. But I think it's better, I think out of everything, that's we got wrestling, and we got BJJ, and we got Gracie, and we got Muay Thai, and we got wrestling, and we got all that stuff up there. I think that's the, the best that you can hope for at what's uh, commercially available. Okay, so I guess A minus, we're set on that, we're okay. I'm with it. Okay, so this is a Russian word there. It says Sistema. F. I know, I was about to I was about to jump the gun and say F. You know, some people claim to me like, oh, it can be applied in sparring and shit like that. Where is it? <laughs> it would have happened. There's a ton of money to be made in martial arts. Right. These these guys that point to some like some old master up on a mountain somewhere, like right. you were talking about. Dude, one of them old masters from the mountain would have come down and made him a million dollars by now. <laughs> he would have done it. If Sistema or any of this stuff, any of the, the, the far out there stuff, if it was what the proponents of it thought it was, some guy would have made a million dollars doing it. You don't think that if there was a Sistema dude that could have wrecked John Jones, he wouldn't have jumped on Twitter and told John Jones, dude, I will wreck you right. using Sistema or Aikido or whatever. Right. Like, you don't think that would have happened? It's ridiculous. And, and then funny enough, we do have those Shu Dong videos where these masters do come out. And I think they and were And they get all, destroyed. Right, and I think, I, I imagine that, I strongly presume that they were the ones who thought they are the guys living in the mountain and they were Everyone supposed to destroy. Wrote Rokus, man, they come into my, they used to come into my studio. We used to have our doors open to people that wanted to visit and spar. And they would come in and they would get the shit kicked out of them. And every single one of them thought that he was that dude, you know? Yeah. And every single one of them was wrong. And they were getting <laughs> the shit kicked out of them by guys who, on a, in the grand scheme of things, we're not the, the best. We're not really that good compared to, you know, like when I, when I was fighting, I was the worst guy on my team, you know? I was the worst guy mm. all, when I was competing. I beat the shit out of a ninja or a Sistema guy or, you know, an Aikido master. Like, not because I'm so good, but because, it, like, it was every single one of them thought they were and then found out they weren't. We're not open to that anymore, though. I don't do it anymore. It's unhealthy. And I have, like, kids that train at my school and people are just there to have a good time. So I don't encourage that stuff anymore. I'm over it. Okay. Taekwondo. F. 
Really? Well, I mean, some Taekwondo guy is going to tell me how his Taekwondo is this or that, or they punch and they, they have throws or whatever, or they have ground fighting. Someone will try to tell you that his Taekwondo school does ground fighting. What's the question? If we're looking for a place to learn how to defend ourselves and we look at a building and the building says Taekwondo on it, it's garbage. Okay. <laughs> I, I trust your opinion because I have No, no, don't concur. You're yeah, too no? easy going, Rokus. Okay, you know I want to see edgy Rokus. <laughs> you know me, I'm, I still have Aikido in my Right, structure. you're just going with the flow. I'm going with you're the just flow. Going, I guess, you're I just guess... letting me stumble past you and flip myself over. Right. <laughs> past you. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can pick out something because, well, I'm thinking of Quan Kicker, but, you know, he's an exception. He's, he's an exceptional athlete, an exceptional martial artist, and has studied everything else, too. Right. Besides that, I just didn't have enough experience with Taekwondo. I was hoping you're going to see a higher score because I know it can be made functional due to Quan Kicker and some other examples. But I think that's where you have to like really push for it, right? It's just you're not going to get there in a Taekwondo school. Yeah. Well... I'm I'm approaching the exercise, like I said. What does it say on the building? It says Taekwondo. When I walk in there, it's probably not going to be very good. You know, I'm sure. Like, I, and I think Quan Kicker, he's he's a tremendous martial artist, and I'm not entirely sure, but not all of his his striking and not all of his tutorials and not all of the stuff he demonstrates is Taekwondo. Like, he's also well versed in other martial arts. A lot of it's Muay Thai. Uh, a lot of it is like when he punches. He, you could probably have a good little boxing round with him. You said, hey, let's just put on boxing gloves and just right. just box. Yeah. He'd probably do all right. But I don't know if that was because of Taekwondo. You go into a school that says Taekwondo on the outside, it better not be to learn how to defend yourself in a real-world encounter because I don't think it has anything that even relates to it. Because the main focus of Taekwondo is going to be that you're going to have the same issue of sport, right, that all the other ones have. Mm. But the difference is their sport doesn't relate to self-defense at all. Like MMA fights are very sporty, but they look very, very close to real life fights. Right. And the further we get down the list, even the ones that have sports, the less their sport looks like fighting. Like our issue with Kyokushin. Yeah. Right? Like they're punching and kicking each other, but look how they're, but they're gaming a rule system. Taekwondo, that's how it is. As, uh, at least the point, I'm talking about point Taekwondo where they just try to play foot tag. But speaking of that, there's still some distance managing. Maybe. So I'm, but I'm thinking if it's worth a D minus. That's that's essentially the only ask, the question I'm asking. Okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> because we're, we, it's together with Sistema. No, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, D minus. And for anyone that's like, well, what about like, f there's two different types of Taekwondo. I can never keep them straight. There's ITF and WTF. Right. And one of them is like real. One of them's karate tag or foot right. tag. Yeah. The one that's real, I just don't know why it's not kickboxing. Like, I just don't know why. I don't know enough about it to know what makes it not kickboxing. Tai Chi. We began this with Aikido. And when I said that uh, a guy that I respect very much calls Aikido the highest form of martial arts, it only doesn't work because people, because humans can't do it. Right. He also includes in that Tai Chi. Oh. Like, he, he includes in that, like, if you possess the attributes to apply Tai Chi, it would be the ultimate martial art. Mm. But it might not score as high as Aikido because I don't know, do they do... You, we only gave Aikido the score because of the... To me, mostly because of the break falls. We also right. mentioned the uh, body awareness. But that body awareness, you get that in the other stuff, right? Right. <laughs> I don't know enough about Tai Chi to know. Is it better or worse than Aikido? Or is it the same? So essentially, we're looking at D- minus or F, right? I don't know either. I bumped into Tai Chi only the one, the gymnastic, you know, kind of flowy, moody, feely... Tai yeah, my grandma, my grandma did Tai Chi. Yeah. Um, when, when she was alive, but I guarantee I could beat her ass. <laughs> Hard to tell for me as well whether it's do it, Rokus. Do it. Okay, I'll. I want you to say edgy Rokus. I'll be F. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god! Oh my god! Rokas, the internet is you went out on a limb there. Put apart. Tai Chi as F for self defense. I'll change my score if I'll ever see a video where Tai Chi does well. <laughs> and last one I think is not as clear cut. Ving Chen. There's a Chilala. Essentially, it ends up looking like kickboxing, just a tiny right. bit of stuff. Which we've touched on, you know, in lots of these other things. Right. But they have punching. They have stuff. I guess I want to go for D minus, not like F, because they do have some striking. But I don't have yeah, a lot of faith and, in it. And if and if we're just taking a general average of what of the places that put that on the building. Right. 
Exactly. Like, will you learn how to defend yourself there? Right. You'll be better off, I think, than someone who hasn't done anything. The all the guys in the bottom half. Yeah. The big the big thing is that they don't address some aspect of it. Uh, the 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 bottom bottom ones. It's they don't address wrestling and ground fighting. The biggest problem that because the guys in kung fu will try to tell you that they do. The guys in Filipino martial arts will try to tell you that they do. Mm. I'm assuming that the guys in pen pen kek pen kek stylat <laughs> or whatever that is i'm just guessing that they probably would tell you that they do the sistema guys would probably tell you that they do right and you might go to a place where they tell you that they do they don't mm. <laughs> they just don't a 12 year old girl who's done brazilian jiu-jitsu for a year will strangle your instructor to death and he won't know how to get out of it i promise I promise you that because there's no way that, that, that you guys have some secret sauce that someone hasn't found to go win Abu Dhabi with. Like, you just, you just, there's no way. Uh, Kung Fu, Wing Chun, that whole stuff, mm. the big problem will be, like many of these words, like it can mean so many things. Mm. Every serious Wing Chun or Kung Fu practitioner that I've ever trained with, that I have ever sparred with in a meaningful way and and felt whether or not they knew how to fight all the ones that did were very self aware and critical of their own art which has been a theme another theme that we've touched on a couple of times mm-hmm. all of them will tell you yeah no nah, man you got you got to know how to wrestle you got to know some bjj you got to be able to box some and then we can make some of these things work mm-hmm. but they never tell you yep this is all i need that's the I think the theme at the top of the list is things that if you only did that thing, you'd be pretty good up, pretty well off. And everything at the bottom of the list, guys will tell you, yeah, but you could use it. But we're not talking about uh, Rokas who travels the world learning new martial arts like like he's in Kung Fu, the legend continues. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like this is your life. This is your life. We're right. talking about a dude trying to like learn how to defend himself. There's also what stands out for me is I think there's the difference in pressure testing. Like if we look yep. at the bottom tier, on pretty much zero pressure testing. The middle tier, the C minus, I think it there's very limited and conditioned pressure testing. Right. Or or that it's sort of I don't think there's a universe. I'm looking at that middle, that C minus area. Yeah. And D as well with the Filipino martial arts. And even I actually no uh, D minus, right? That whole that whole thing. The bottom one, there's no sport that I know of for any of those. The lower tier ones that have sports, maybe there's a a, a fractured rule set. Right. Rule sets, you know, different organizations with different rule sets. In some of the cases with like karate, there's different styles. Or, as you said, if there is a sport, it's sort of like a very limited aspect of combat, which is true for boxing and kickboxing, but it's kind of universally accepted. There's rule, the rule sets, there's less rule sets out there. There's differing rule sets for kickboxing, but uh, you know whether you're a bad dude in those things or not. There's no question. There's there's less fake belts. You know, they talk right. about karate champions. Like, it's, you can be a karate champion <laughs> of, of whatever organization that's in your area, you know? One of the things that people, some people criticize BJJ in that the, there's becoming so many rule sets that they say it's like screwing up the art mm. because people are training for specific rule sets. Right. And the more specific rule set you get, the further away from self-defense you get. If you're inverting and using rubber guard and stuff like that because it works within your sport, that's counterproductive to self-defense what's the reason in your words why there we don't have an s i know wrestling was almost there but yeah it, we ended up with no s no super martial arts the number one reason that there's no real self-defense martial art is money there's no money in that mm. there's no real money in that even the guys that come the closest to me which is guys like ryan hoover uh uh, Aaron Janetti, Eli Knight, Craig Douglas, you know, my mentors, the people that I train under and and travel as regularly as I can to train with to learn self-defense from. Mm. They even, uh, Mike Don Vito is another one I've done videos with recently. All of them don't like the term self-defense. They all would like to move away from that term. Self-defense is just a marketing term. Mm. There's nothing, now just because you're marketing something doesn't mean it's bad. You can market good, helpful things, but it's not self-defense. They're essentially teaching fighting. Mm. And if they're honest with people about what they're teaching, less people will learn it. And if you're good at it, you don't do it for free. Mm. Uh, there are these little like tactical martial arts places, 
locally, it might be one in your town that generally where the guy has a day job. And I'm not knocking martial arts instructors that have day jobs. Right. Most do, right? But he definitely doesn't make any money. It's not a significant form of his income because he's teaching stuff that people won't pay a lot of money for. Mm. People will pay $150 a month to learn Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They will not pay $150 a month to learn self-defense. They'll pay $20 a month or $50 a month or whatever. It's money, so it's not lucrative. So people who are great at it won't do it. There's also not a lot of glory in teaching it, whereas guys that teach in the sports, like boxing coaches or BJJ coaches or Muay Thai coaches, they might not make a living at it, but they get a great amount of fulfillment from it because they can see their athletes compete. Mm. So you're either getting fulfillment from it or money from it, which means coaches who are good at it will teach it. So there's no money in teaching self-defense. The other reason is because, much like the problems with mixed martial arts, you'd have to get so good at so many things. The majority of it being soft skills. Verbal skills, de-escalation, you know, threat assessment, uh, threat management, you know, stuff that has nothing to do with punching, kicking, driving, shooting, or lifting weights. Which, by the way, that's what you have to do next. You have to learn to punch, kick, wrestle, drive, shoot, lift weights, have good situational awareness, know what to do with the information you're getting, you basically have to turn into a super spy to study a martial art that's good for self-defense. You'd reach a really big point of diminishing returns relative to the amount of time you'd have to spend to get good enough to say you're good versus how likely the scenario is to present itself when if you just went to MMA or jiu-jitsu or wrestling or whatever or Muay Thai or judo or whatever, even karate, if you just went and did that for two years, you're probably good, right? Go do that for two years, you're probably good. Do some weapons retention stuff. Carry a pistol if it's legal. Know how to deal with someone who has a weapon. Uh, but the, the guys teaching how to deal with a weapon, Filipino martial arts, looking at you, that also don't wrestle, and I mean really wrestle, not say Filipino martial arts has wrestling too. I ain't never seen it, right? You have to be able to do all of it. So it's just, it requires so much time and so much energy and so much money. There's not a huge market for it. But the, the Fit to Fight crew, the Endeavor crew, Shiv Works, like all those guys that I was, that I was name dropping earlier, they're all, they're all doing it to one degree or another. And they're doing it about as best as you can. And they're, they're mixing a bunch of martial arts and adding soft skills and weapons. For the tier list, did anything surprise you? Yeah, when you, when you mentioned the break falling, I thought, dude, that's more likely to help you like not get hurt. Right. I'd say knowing how to break fall has helped me avoid serious injury more than any of my fighting skills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, same here, it, saved my butt a number of times. Outside of when I was policing or bouncing, where I'm, you're sort of like guaranteed to right. get into violent encounters, right. just as a regular guy walking around, I can't, think of too many times where I've ever had to like fight a dude when it wasn't in a professional setting. But I've fallen down and bumped into things a lot. So having that in my brain made me think like, man, dude, MMA guys need to break fall. Right. You know? Yeah. How how much stuff ended up in that in that C minus category? The the reoccurring theme where if you ask any of the guys that do that stuff, they'll tell you it's A. Or even S, some of them. Right. Right? Yeah. And if you ask anybody that doesn't do that stuff and hasn't thought critically about this stuff, they'll tell you it's all bullshit and it's F. Mm. And that's a big problem in martial arts, in my opinion, is people right. are so, like, so, like, beholden to their thing, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't recognize, like, that every everything has some value, except for, except for ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> and <system. laughs> Which, actually... Remember, I even made a case that I think that the guys that do that ninja stuff probably, at the very least, have right. spent a lot of time like thinking about it, and doing threat assessments and risk assessments and stuff like right. that. 